How am I doing? I'm making some progress. The picture looks pretty cool. Some of these are brutal though, including this one, 16 part one. A lot of work. Reminding me of some work I've done with um, cameras with uh, pan and tilt capability connected to a computer over a serial port with some kind of protocol. So you get all this data coming back and you got to make sense of it. That's kind of what this is. So I'm going to assume you've kind of gone through this rather than trying to do that here. And I'll show you what I've done to solve this. Uh, so I've got, a, I've got a couple of classes. Um, we're given these packets. So here's a real simple one. Um, it's hexadecimal characters in a string. And when this is decoded, the sum of the version numbers is six. So that's what this, this test is doing. It's taking all of these little kind of worked examples from here starting with this one and it um, decodes it and sums up the version numbers and then checks that the version number matches what's what's expected here so all the test data works and um, I also have the the real data which is here so this is one gigantic blob of a string with hexadecimal digits in it, which when you turn it into binary, it's a super long string of thousands of bits. So let's look at the tests for the test bit stream. Um, I've created a class that will deliver the bits in order, kind of like a stream. So you give it a hex string and then you pull, uh, pull data out of it. So the test for that is that we instantiate this bitstream with 0, 1, E, F, and we expect to pull out of that four bits at a time. Um, a bit, a four bits is a nibble, nibble's half a byte. So we should get a 0, a 1, and uh, an E in hex is a 14 in decimal, and F in hex, whoops, is a 15 in decimal. So we're going through and we're going to pull out these integers and we're going to compare them with what we expected. I think I might run this test for you with the breakpoint here. So let's do, um, let's see if we can get this to debug. Okay, so here we are for expected value and expected values. We're going to call next int from the bit stream. Let's just go in and we'll see what that does. Okay, here's next int in the bit stream. Get the next num bits for bits and return them parsed as a binary number. So for here, from here we're going to call next string, which gets the next num bits bits as a string. So let's go into that. And we've asked for the next four bits. So the data is in this self bit string. So here's the here's the data um, as a binary string. And now we're going to get the, using this slice, we're going to get the number of bits that we've asked for. And then we're going to uh, discard what we've just pulled out of there. So this is going to change here. I'm going to get a little shorter so it only holds what's remaining. And then the position gets updated with where we are now. So we've pulled out uh, four bits and we're at position four in this stream. I'm going to return to the here and now return to here and we're back in the test. And this compares what we got with the expected value, which is zero. So that worked. Now the expected value is one and that works. And we expect the 14 and we got it. We expect a 15, and we got it. So that is that test. Okay, do we want to look at anything else in 
the bitstream class. Yeah, I think we probably should. Deliver integers from a stream of bits created from a hex string. When you call it, we have this hex string. So each character in the string is a, is a hexadecimal digit, which is four bits or half a byte or a nibble. So this is the hex nibble string. And the first thing we do is kind of uh, turn it into binary. Um, so let's see. I'd kind of like to run this, but how do we want to do it? Put a breakpoint here. And um, maybe we'll just run that test again. Okay, so here we are. How did we get here? We started from this test. We're instantiating the bitstream with this hex uh, value. And what are we doing? We're doing a join. The binary nibble string, a hex nibble string. Well, what does all that mean? Well, we're looking at hex nibble string, which is this string containing 0, 1, E, F. We're going to get every nibble out of that. That's this part. So there's a, there's a loop here. It's going to go four times, once for each nibble, 0, 1, E, F. And then what are we going to do with those individual nibbles? We're going to pass them to binary nibble string. Well, what does that do? Well, that'll convert something like an E into a string of the binary digits that, that um, have the value of uh, 14, like the E. Or 0 turns into a string 0, 0, 0, 0. So let's um, push F7 and see if we can get into the binary nibble string. Here we go. Okay, so we've called binary nibble string with the zero, which is that first nibble. And we take that string and we convert it, assuming it's in base 16, to an integer. And since we started with a string with a zero in it, now we have a, an integer with a zero. And when we call the bin function, it takes an integer and it gives us a binary representation of it, but it also includes a 0b. So we have a little slicer to remove the 0b. And now we end up with just what? Bit string, just the 0. We're trying to produce 4 bits, so we're padding the bits. So the length of bit string is 1, 4 minus 1 is 3, the amount of padding we need is 3, so if we take a zero string and multiply it by padding needed, that gives us a string of zero, 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 plus the bit string, which is a zero, and that's gonna give us a string of length four containing four zeros. So we'll go back. And now, let's see if we can get back into binary nibble string with a different value. Now we have the one. So we turn that into an integer, it's a 1, and we turn that into binary. So 0 and 1 are the same in hex, decimal, and binary, so this is not terribly interesting. Let's see if we can get to the, the E. Okay, now we've got an E here, so this should be a little more interesting. We're going to use int to turn that E, assuming it's base 16, um, into a number, and we get 14 because that's what a hexadecimal E is in decimal. Now we need to turn that into binary, and that looks like this, 1110. So the 1's place, 2, 4, 8. So 8 plus 4 is 12, uh, plus 2 is 14. So that's a 14, and there's no padding needed, so we just return... Um, this string times zero is nothing, and so we're just returning bit string, which is this. Okay, um, next int, I think we looked at when we were tracing through from the test, and also this one. So I think we've explored the bit stream class well enough now. 
Um, should we look at this decoder class? Why don't we try stepping through with just one of these tests? Um, let's put breakpoints here and here inside parse. Then we'll go to the test. And I just want to step through the processing of this one, of this little packet here. So let's run this test under the debugger and wait to get to those breakpoints. Okay, here we are. So we've instantiated the decoder. Here's, here's the test. So decoder gets decoder of hex string. We're in the constructor. So now we're going to use bitstream. Uh, let me take off the breakpoint in there and we'll get back to here. Okay, so self bits is a bitstream and that handles all those details of getting the data bits out. Okay, now the we set the version sum. For part one, we need to know the sum of all the version numbers we encounter. So we set that to zero. Okay, so that completes the instantiate in the decoder. Now we're going to parse. And the zero means we're starting at level zero. Parse is, parse is recursive because we've got nesting. We've got kind of a whole hierarchy of these packets contained in other packets. Parse is recursive. And to make the output look more interesting, I keep track of what level we're, what recursion level we're at. Okay, so we've called parse. We're starting here. And um, so what are we doing? We're making kind of a shortcut to the next int method of the bitstream. So this is a, this is a, um, a function that we're going to call just to save, so instead of Typing next int three, we would have had to type self dot bits dot next int three. So this makes it a little bit shorter. Okay, so the indentation is two spaces times the level, and the level is zero, so that's an empty string. And now we're going to call next int to get the um, to get an integer from the first three bits. Well, let's just look at what we're expecting to get here. So the first three bits are one one zero. And if you treat that as a binary number and you convert it to decimal, one, two, four, that should be a six. So we should see a six here. Right. So that's version, the version number six. And then we sum, we add that to our sum of version numbers. Okay. And then um, what's next? Next is the type that's in the next three bits. So that's going to be one, zero, zero, which is one, two, four. So it's a type four. There it is. We print a little message. And again, the messages are not appearing. I'm not sure what's up with this. Okay, now we do things depending on the type. So type four is a literal. Everything else is an operator. Um, this is a literal, so let's go into parse literal. This is going to return a value. So it starts out, we consider it to be zero. And then we have a little flag. Is there more coming? Keep going while there's more coming. And the very next bit tells us whether there's going to be more after this. And there is. So now we get the next four bits. That's our nibble. So that's a, that's a seven. And now we shift the current value left by four. So we're, we're getting, imagine we're receiving some number of nibbles and we need to assemble them into one longer binary number. So as the new nibbles arrive, we're shifting over the other nibbles to make room for them. So the value is zero now and shifting that left by four bits does nothing to it, but we'll add, uh, we'll add seven to it. So the value now is seven, but there is no more. So that's what we're going to Oh, there, there is more. There's another, there's another um, nibble coming in. And another one after that. So we've got it. This one's 14. And so now we need to take that 7 and shift it over 4 and then add this new nibble to it. And 
Interesting, the value looks like it's still zero. How's that possible? Okay, I just looked up in the operator uh, precedents for Python and um, plus happens before shifts. So, oops, um, it doesn't matter in part one, but this, this needs to have parentheses around it. Okay, so let's carry on here. Uh, we've finished parsing literal. And uh, we have the version sum, which is six, which is the only thing we really need for part one is the sum of the versions. And then we print that and make sure that it um, matches what we were expecting. Okay, let's do um, a, maybe a more complicated one. Let's go through and um, let's comment out these and we'll just do the last one. Okay, the one that starts with A00. A00. This one. So we'll go through and look at the code and then we'll see. So it's an operator packet that contains an operator packet that contains an operator packet that contains five literal values. Wow. Okay, let's go through, do that. We'll run this test in the debugger. I think I have breakpoints set from before. Okay, so our packet is this longer thing here. And um, just for fun, why don't we look at the bits? Here they are. That's quite a long stream of bits. Okay, so decoder started. I think maybe these messages are happening because I'm running it under the under the under a test. I don't know. I don't know why where my output's going. Okay, so now we'll do parse. And we'll skip over these function definitions here. And here we go. Version number, the type. And this is an operator. So let's go in. We're going to parse an operator. So when you parse an operator, you got to look at the first bit and it kind of tells you what to do. This is the length type ID. So this tells us um, how we're to know how many uh, packets are inside this packet. So in um, for this value of length type ID zero, we're parsing the sub packets by length. So let's go there. Here we are. And the, the length of the packets is 91. And so we know where we are now from self bits pause. We're at position 22, and we know that we want to keep going until we get to pause, until pause gets, uh, increases by packet lengths, packets length. So this loop goes, and now we're doing a recursive call to parse for the, for the next level. And um, that takes us to here. So let's see what we have. Version one, this is a type zero, so it's an operator. So what are we expecting? An operator, an operator, an operator, and then five um, literals, was it that? So we parse the operator, we've, we've done this before. This time, this operator's sub packets, we're gonna parse by count. So let's look at that. This one is simply a loop that does, that happens once for each, in the, each packet in the packet count. So now we're doing parse recursively. And notice now we're at 0, 1, 2. And also you can kind of see the, the path through here. Here's the test. Here's parse, parse operator, parse sub packets by length. We parsed one of those. It's an operator. Now we're processing, parsing the sub packets for that operator. This is another operator. Also parse subpackets by count. 
and in we go. Another recursive call. I think you get the idea. There's a lot of recursion. and uh, So I'm going to stop this debugging session here. And now I want to run the program with the real data for you so you can just see the, the nice output that I made um, when print is working. So I just want to run this. That's it. So let's have a look at my carefully crafted output. Okay, so the hex string is this. So this is the input. And um, the that same value in binary should be eight times longer because binary holds two possible values. Hexadecimal holds 16 possible values. And that's a factor of eight difference. Okay, so this is what we're working with. This program goes through and all these zeros and ones, it makes sense out of it. It's it's amazing. And then this this shows that the very first, the outermost packet, version three, type zero, um, packet's length is 5208. And then this is a this is a nested packet. This is a packet nested under that. These are packets nested under those. So look at look at the complexity here of this. especially down here. It's a lot of nesting. It's kind of amazing that, that this works and that it doesn't get off by one bit or something. Um, so this is why I tweeted this because this was brutal. I made some I made some mistakes in it. Uh, and eventually got it to work. So it was tough. See you next time.